ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais. Hello, hello and welcome to the 67th annual Golden Globe Awards, live from Los Angeles. I'm Ricky Gervais. Um, thank you. You, uh, you probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell, did you? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? He's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's pay, him. Let's pay him hundreds of millions of dollars and put him in every movie. If you can't be bothered to go to the cinema to see Steve in action, then um, just watch him every Thursday here on NBC. <laughs> or if you think that particular version of the show has jumped the shark a little bit, um, <laughs> that's what some of the forums are saying, then um, watch the original Fridays. <laughs> on Adult Swim. <laughs> or get the box set, that's still available. So, um, just, just, just 12 episodes and a special. Quality, not quantity, that's what, that's what counts. I, uh, so, uh, go and get that. Um, I will be making the most of this opportunity. I'm not used to these sort of viewing figures. <laughs> Let's face it, nor is NBC. So... <laughs> On a serious note, just looking at all the faces here reminds me of some of the great work that's been done this year by cosmetic surgeons. Um, <laughs> you all look great. I've had a little bit of work done. I've had cheek implants. Uh, they put them there, which is annoying. <laughs> and I, uh, I've had a penis reduction. <laughs> just got the one now. That's enough. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is very tiny. Uh, but so are my hands, so when I'm holding it, it looks pretty big. <laughs> and let's face it, I usually am holding it. Um, but I wish I was doing that now instead of this, to be honest. But let's... It is an honour to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. Actors. They're just... They're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. <laughs> He'd be all over the place. We'd go, oh, where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know, Hugh with the aid of coaches that can eventually learn his lines while saving lives. He's a genius. <laughs> How could you replace Kiefer Sutherland in 24? I'd love to see a real anti-terrorist agent try and defuse a bomb in a busy train station in one hour. <laughs> Some of those scenes, by the way, where Kiefer grabs someone and beats them to a pulp, they weren't even in the script. Um, <laughs> The director just said, keep rolling, we'll work it into the... <laughs> but actors aren't just loved here in Hollywood, they are loved the world over, because they're recognisable. You can be anywhere, you could be in the third world, okay, and you get a glimpse of a Hollywood star, and it makes you feel better, okay? You could be a little, a little child, a little Asian child, with no possessions and no money, but you get a, you see a picture of Angelina Jolie, and you think, oh, mummy! <laughs> Let's get on with it before NBC replaced me with Jay Leno. Um, <laughs> well, it's going well, isn't it? We've had, uh, we've seen some worthy winners and some not so worthy ones. Let's be, no, I'm not going to mention them now, am I? I'll be doing that on my blog at rickygervais.com. <laughs> I've had thousands of emails over the past few days saying, 
Why, oh why, was the invention of lying not nominated? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe the DVD will win an award. That's out Tuesday at Walmart. <laughs> so go and buy that. Um, one thing that can't be bought is a Golden Globe. Officially. <laughs> I'm not going to do this again anyway. Um, <laughs> but if you were <laughs> to buy one, the man to see would be Philip Burke. Yeah. To... <laughs> the, uh, the next category contains a couple of legends, one of which we've already seen, Sir Paul McCartney. Fellow Brit, so good luck to him. I shouldn't be biased, but uh, we actually came over on the same flight. I didn't get to speak to him because I was up the front in um, first class and he was behind me in coach. Um, <laughs> saving money. He spent an awful lot last year. I don't think we have to feel too sorry for him. He's doing all right. I'm a thing. Um, the serious bit now. Um, the Golden Globes is shown all over the world. It is oblivious to colour or creed. It doesn't just celebrate talent, it celebrates difference. It crushes prejudice and stereotype. One stereotype I hate is that all Irishmen are just drunk, sweary hellraisers. Please welcome Colin Farrell. Um, this next category is a bit of a downer to be honest, it's for writing. Um, <laughs> we all know writers get way too much credit in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> and that's due to the generosity of actors sometimes mentioning them. Do you know what I mean? But what would writers do without actors? I don't want to keep going on about actors, but they're the most important ones, OK? <laughs> it's not the words you say, it's how good you look when you're saying them. That everyone knows that. And the, the great thing about actors is they want to keep moving forward. They're chameleons, ever-changing and leaving the past behind. Please welcome Rachel Off Friends and that bloke from 300. <laughs> Hello. Calm down. Calm down. We're on the home straight. The next presenter is an award-winning actress with special powers. In Die Another Day, she used her powers of seduction to win over James Bond. In X-Men, she used her powers to control the elements. In Catwoman, she used the power of being able to wash herself all over. And <laughs> She's the paw for behind the ear. It's brilliant. <laughs> How you doing, all right? <laughs> Cheers. Um, I've had a couple. I'm not going to lie to you. Now listen up. Um, I hope I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean... It's not my fault. There's a lot of powerful people here, so if I said... It's... Honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. The next presenter is not only one of uh, Hollywood's best actors, he's also one of the coolest men in the world. I haven't got a, a bad word to say about him, mostly because he's got arms as big as my legs. Please welcome the amazing Mickey Rourke. Well, um, that's it. I've, we've got about eight seconds, so thank you so much. Well done to all the winners. And if I could have one wish, it would be peace on earth. No, can I change that? I want everyone to watch the Ricky Gervais show on HBO. Live from the star-filled International Ballroom of the Beverly Hilton Hotel, welcome to the 68th Annual Golden Globe Awards. And now, your host for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais. Thank you. 
Hello. And hello. Welcome to the 68th annual Golden Globe Awards, live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. It's going to be a night of partying and heavy drinking. Or as Charlie Sheen calls it, breakfast. Wow. Whoa. So, let's get this straight. What he did was, he, uh, he picked up a porn star, um, paid her to have dinner with him, uh, introduced her to his ex-wife, as you do, uh, <laughs> Uh, went to a hotel, uh, got, got drunk, got naked, trashed the place while she was locked in a cupboard. And uh, <laughs> that was a Monday. What, what did he do New Year's Eve? <laughs> anyway, welcome. The Golden Globes is a celebration of the best in TV and movies over the last year, voted for by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you what. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Who has? Um, but, no, it must be good, because it's nominated. So shut up, OK? And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going round that the only reason The Tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... No. All that happened was some of them were taken to see Cher in concert. How the hell is that a bribe? Really? Do you want to go and see Cher? No. Why not? Because it's not 1975. <laughs> there were a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex in the City 2. Um, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um, <laughs> well, great job. Girls, we know how old you are. I saw one of you in an episode of Bonanza. Also not nominated, I love you, Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, what? What? Probably. My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. <laughs> They're not here. OK. <laughs> There's been some great new TV drama this year, like Boardwalk Empire and The Walking Dead. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Talking of The Walking Dead, congratulations to Hugh Hefner, who, uh, who's getting married at the age of 84 to 24-year-old beauty, Crystal Harris. Um, when she was asked why she was marrying him, she said because he lied about his age. He told me he was 94. Oh, come on. Um, don't worry. Hold out and just, just don't look at it when you touch it. That's no. <laughs> I warned them. Um, one of the biggest events in TV this year was the finale of Lost, one of my favourites, and uh, all the questions were answered, yeah. Um, I have to say, though, it was quite a complicated finale. I'm not sure I totally understood it all, but from what I can make out, I'm pretty sure the fat one ate them all. Uh, I, I think... Should we get on with it? Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. Um, <laughs> please welcome Scarlett Johansson. You know our next presenter from such films as Hudson Hawk, Look Who's Talking, Mercury Rising, Colour of Night, Fifth Element, Heart's War. 
please welcome Ashton Kutcher's dad, Bruce Willis. Sometimes Hollywood does, uh, Hollywood does provide you with outrageous fortune. Next up, Eva Longoria has the daunting task of introducing the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. That's nothing. I just had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in. Um, it was messy. Please welcome Eva Longoria. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press, Philip Burke. Thank you, Eva. And Ricky, next time you want me to help you qualify your movies, go to another guy. All right. I love this next presenter. He's so cool. Um, he's the star of Iron Man, Two Girls and a Guy, Wonder Boys. Sorry, are these porn films. What? <laughs> kiss, kiss, bang, bang. <laughs> Bowfinger. Really? Yeah. Up the Academy. Come on. He has done all those films, but many of you in this room probably know him best from such facilities as the Betty Ford Clinic and Los Angeles County Jail. Please welcome Robert Downey Jr. Aside from the fact uh, that it's been hugely mean-spirited with mildly sinister undertones, I'd say the vibe of the show is pretty good so far, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, uh, I consider myself a veteran of sorts, and I've made uh, somewhat of a study of this. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know if an actress can do her best work until I've slept with her. Julianne. <laughs> Told her that I was working with strange new feelings that were confusing me, Angie. <laughs> Only to have her blow me off halfway through the shoot like it never happened, Annette. <laughs> or casually mention that her boyfriend is coming for a location visit because he misses her and what they have is real then have the gall to invite me to join them at a three-top for dinner, Anne? Why? No, I'm not trying to creep anyone out, but where's Emma? I, I think I got something for us. It's kind of like a blue Valentine thing, but not age-appropriate. Now, I'm not saying that my theory doesn't hold water, but somehow all of these women rendered exquisite performances without a shred of help from me, so I guess I'm just saying, if I could, I'd give it to all five of you. <laughs> no. At once. The award. Right here, center stage, in front of my wife, the audience, and millions of viewers. Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write, and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. <laughs> I love it. Never gets old. Tonight, 
We stand before you not as Golden Globe Award winners, but as writers. Don't turn the channel. We're still stars. But as stars who are also writers, it gives us great pleasure to honor the nominees for Best Screenplay. Screenplays we could have written if we had had time. Like the one about the mountain climber. I would have given my right arm to have written that. There's a story of a couple of lesbians. It's the lesbian couple. Ah. There's a long, complicated sci-fi thriller starring Leonardo DiCaprio, not unlike my dreams. Mine as well. There's also the story of Britain's King George V.I. The Sixth. V.I. The Sixth. And finally, the true life story of social networking and how it ruined our ability to interact one-on-one. -on -one. I heard about that movie on Facebook from a friend I never met. Welcome back. Now, our next presenters are young and thin, with hair and teeth. They're lovely to look at, which is just as well, because they're presenting the award for Best Foreign Language Film, a category that no one in America cares about. Please welcome Olivia Wilde and Robert Pattinson. Jeremy Irons. Here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture. OK. What can I say about our next two presenters? The first is an actor, producer, writer and director whose movies have grossed over three and a half billion dollars at the box office. He's won two Academy Awards and three Golden Globes for his powerful and varied performances, starring in such films as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Apollo 13 and Saving Private Ryan. The other is Tim Allen. Well, you know, like, like many of you, we recall back when Ricky Gervais was a slightly chubby but very kind co comedian. Yeah. Neither of which is he now. Hello, and welcome back. The next presenter is a national treasure, Miss Congeniality herself. This down-to-earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then as a railway fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport, because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. Thank you very much. That's about it. Um, well done. Justice there. Thanks, everyone in the room, for being good sports. Thanks to NBC. Thanks to the Hollywood Foreign Press. Um, thank you for watching at home. And thank you to God for making me an atheist. Thank you. Uh Hotel. Welcome to the 69th Annual Golden Globe Awards. And now, your host for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais. Oh. So, where was I? Um, nervous? Don't be. This isn't about you. Right. Hello. I'm Ricky Gervais, and welcome to the 69th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. Voted for by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Tonight, you get Britain's biggest comedian hosting the world's second biggest award show on America's third biggest network. <laughs> Sorry, is it four? It's four. For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, but without all that esteem. Yeah. 
The Golden Globes are to the Oscars what Kim Kardashian is to Kate Middleton, basically. <laughs> what? Bit louder, bit trashier, bit drunker, and more easily bought. Um, <laughs> allegedly, nothing's been proved. But. <laughs> Who needs the Oscars? Not me, and not Eddie Murphy. He walked out on them. He said no, and good for him. But when the man who said yes to Norbit says no to you, <laughs> you know you're in trouble. I love Eddie Murphy. He loves dressing up, doesn't he? Um, versatile. He's versatile. No, he is. Bit of trivia for you, actually. Eddie Murphy and Adam Sandler, between them, played all the parts in the movie The Help. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> they were brilliant. I can't believe they're not here. Or maybe they are. They're masters of disguise. They could be... <clears throat> now, the Hollywood Foreign Press have warned me that if I insult any of you or any of them or offend any viewers or cause any controversy whatsoever, they'll definitely invite me back next year as well. <laughs> They actually gave me a list of rules. I'm going to ignore them, but I thought it'd be good to read them out, OK? This is real, OK? No profanity. That's fine. I've got a huge vocabulary. No nudity. See, that's a shame, because I've got a huge... <laughs> ...vocabulary. Um, but a tiny penis. No, no, it's true. Doesn't matter. I don't care. It works. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. I don't... I don't... No smut or innuendo. And I'm not to libel anyone. <laughs> and I mustn't mention Mel Gibson this year. Uh, not his private life, his politics, his recent films, and especially not Jodie Foster's Beaver. Um, I haven't seen it myself. Um, I've spoken to a lot of guys here, they haven't seen it either, but that doesn't mean it's not any good. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Um, it's been an amazing year in show business. It's not all been good news. What's with all the divorces? What's going on? I mean, Arnold and Maria, J-Lo and Mark Antony, Ashton and Demi, Kim Kardashian and some guy no one will ever remember. He wasn't, he wasn't around long. 72 days. A marriage that lasted 72 days. I've sat through longer James Cameron acceptance speeches than that. <laughs> Other celebrity scandal. Justin Bieber nearly had to take a paternity test. <laughs> what a waste of a test that would have been. <laughs> no, he's not the father. The only way that he could have impregnated a girl was if he'd borrowed one of Martha Stewart's old turkey basters. <laughs> Open wide. Um... It's been a, a big year for women in film. Bridesmaids, one of my favourite comedies of the year, yeah. The girls finally proved that they can be as raunchy as the men. Farting, burping, cursing, performing wild sex acts, even pooping in the sink. I, I actually heard for a search the cast spent the weekend with Dame Helen Mirren. She's dreadful, honestly. You don't... You don't see a lot of it because she's got good PR, but she's off the rails. Uh, <laughs> but the Golden Globes aren't just about movies. It also celebrates the best in TV as well. New shows like The Amazing Homeland, which is just... In it's amazing. <laughs> and, and returning shows like Boardwalk Empire. Um, I love that show. It's great. Um, it's, for those who don't know, it's about a load of immigrants who came to America about 100 years ago and they got involved in bribery and corruption and they worked their way up into high society. But enough about the Hollywood foreign press. <laughs> I'm joking. I love them. And they're good sports for inviting me back. And what I didn't know, they do an awful lot for charity and they're non-profit organisation, just like NBC. So, thank... <laughs> Should we get on with it? This time last year, our first presenter was the biggest movie star on the planet. But I insulted his film, The Tourist, causing his career to plummet so far that he was forced to work with me on my new show, Life's Too Short, 
which premieres on HBO on February the 19th. Please welcome the man who will wear literally anything Tim Burton tells him to, Johnny Depp. <laughs> Just before, I want to ask you a question. It's real. You can have some. Just checking. Yeah. Um, and be honest. What? Are you on recreational drugs? I'm joking. No, that's not the question. <laughs> and we all know the answer. Um, have you... Ready? I, I guess so. Have you seen The Tourist yet? <laughs> have you? Uh, uh, no. No. <laughs> Right. We're already five minutes over. I don't know. I, that's your fault. I was bang on. I just checked, OK? Professional. Keep your speeches short. You don't need to thank everyone you've ever met or members of your family that have done nothing towards this. <laughs> just do the main two. Your agent and God. They're the, they're the, that's the two I thank. Because in my opinion, I know for a fact that both God and my agent had exactly the same amount of input in my career. So that's... <laughs> it's got to be done. For our next category, we have two presenters. One is in the huge worldwide hit Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. The second, as we've heard, made her mark in comedy this summer by defecating into a sink. <laughs> Amazingly, that's still less demeaning than what most of you have done to make it in show business. <laughs> Please welcome Melissa McCarthy and Paula Patton. <laughs> oh, it's going well, isn't it? You're so much better than last year's audience. No, they had a right stick up their ass. Thank you. Good. There's a pecking order here. TV round the edge. Movie stars in the middle. Our next presenter is Rare. He managed to move all the way from the back when he was on ER to right down the front by becoming one of the biggest stars in the world. If he gets any more popular or any more handsome, he'll be hosting this puppy next year. <laughs> Here he is, the Kloonmeister General, Giorgio Clooney. Golden Globes on NBC. OK, our next presenter is the Queen of Pop. Not you, Alton. Sit down. This is... She's all woman. I'll give you some clues. She's always vogue, she's a material girl, and she's just like a virgin. <clears throat> Please welcome Madonna. If I'm still just like a virgin, Ricky, then why don't you come over here and do something about it? I haven't kissed a girl in a few years. <laughs> On TV. Hmm. Oh. Hello. Come on. Moving on. I can't wait to introduce our next presenters. It's Salma Hayek and Antonio Bandera, so you can see why I'm excited. I've loved their work for many years, and I just got to talk to them for the first time, so I'm made up. Um, they're ridiculously gorgeous specimens. They're extremely talented and probably very interesting. I'm not sure, because I can't... Please welcome Salma Hayek and Antonio Banderas. Oh, nearly there, nearly there. Um, 
it's so good having a job where you can get drunk and say what you want. It's like, and they still pay you. It's just amazing for me. Um, our next presenter is British, like me. But unlike me, he's won an Oscar. Um, for his brilliant portrayal in The King's Speech. He's also swooned over by women. I don't see it. I don't get it. But good luck to him. Um, he's also loved by the critics. Oh, good for him. But <clears throat> what you don't know about him is he's very racist. <laughs> very. In private. I mean, really nasty stuff. He also, I've seen him punch a little blind kitten. Please welcome the evil Colin Firth. Um, as I was on my way in, I noticed some very angry religious people uh, outside with, um, <laughs> with big placards threatening us all with brimstone and uh, pestilence and perdition for our sins. They, what they don't realise is we have Ricky. It's, um... <laughs> Thank you. Last year, our next presenter won both the Golden Globe and the Oscar for her brilliant performance in Black Swan. This year, she took some time out to have a baby. Consequently, she's been nominated for nothing. <laughs> but really pathetic. But she's learned that valuable lesson that all you already knew, never put family first. <laughs> Please welcome the very foolish Natalie Portman. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Um, congratulations to all the nominees uh, and all the winners. And uh, thank you so much for coming. And I hope you enjoyed the goodie bags and the champagne and the gold. I hope that took your mind off the recession for a little while. Thanks. Good night. There is three-time Golden Globe winner and a nominee tonight for Derek, Ricky Gervais. Oh going well, isn't it? <laughs> Let's not ruin it. <laughs> By me saying anything, really. No one wants to see me insult any of you rich, beautiful, overprivileged <laughs> celebrities. So no ordinary people at home wants to <laughs> see that, because you're, you're better than ordinary people. Um, <laughs> And you know it, and they know it deep down. <laughs> I'm not going to start picking on things you've done. <laughs> Some of it immoral. <laughs> A lot of it illegal. <laughs> oh. But if we've learned one thing, it's that famous people are above the law, as it, as it should be. So <laughs> I'm not going to be around the terrible things you've done to get here. Tonight, <laughs> Streep and <laughs> Clooney. <laughs> I'm not even looking at Katie Holmes. Um, so <laughs> let's get on with it before I say some insulting. Here are the nominees for Best Actress in a Motion Picture, Comedy or Musical Amy Adams, Big Eyes. Emily Blunt, Into the Woods. <laughs> Helen Mirren, The Hundred Foot Journey. <laughs> Julianne Moore, Maps to the Stars. <laughs> Quevenjani Wallace, Annie. <laughs> I've been practising saying that last name so I don't have a John Travolta moment. So I got, I got away with it. I still watch that every day on YouTube. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's just brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the Golden Globe goes to... Amy Adams, Big Eyes. Thank you. <sighs> Let's do the show, shall we? On a serious note, the Golden Globes are about excellence. 
To win one, you have to do something amazing. Neither of our first two presenters have won a Golden Globe. <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing here, really, but I don't choose the guests. Please welcome the fantastic Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill. Welcome back. The Golden Globes doesn't have an in-memoriam section to get you all depressed. Instead, we let the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press say a few words. <laughs> Please welcome Lorenzo Soria. Our next presenter uh, is the star of the hilarious comedy The Martian. He nearly died. Right. <laughs> He's also the only person who Ben Affleck hasn't been unfaithful to. Please welcome Matt Damon. <laughs> welcome back. Joy and Trainwreck. No, not the names of Charlie Sheen's two favourite hookers. <laughs> the films of our next two presenters. They're best friends, by the way. They wanted me to <laughs> tell you that. There. And if you forget, they said they'd, they'd tweet you and remind... Basically, they they come round and shout it through. They're best friend. It's like they've never had a friend before. <laughs> Please welcome Amy Schumer and Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> oh. This show is way too long, isn't it? It's way too... This could be half an hour. This one was in the writer's strike when they just read the winners and just... <laughs> OK. Let's get through it. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Some people still think this award means something. The winners, just listen to me. Listen. It doesn't just... Right. When Brad and Angelina see our next two adorable little presenters, they're going to want to adopt them. Please welcome Kevin Hart and Ken Jeong. <laughs> OK. Right, listen, this is... Shush. <laughs> shush, shut up, really, seriously. Right. A few years ago, on this show, I made a joke about Mel Gibson getting a bit drunk and saying a few unsavoury things. We've all done it. I wasn't judging him, but now I find myself in the awkward position of having to introduce him again. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure it's embarrassing for both of us, OK? And I blame NBC for this terrible situation. <laughs> Mal blames... We know who Mal blames. Listen, I still feel a bit bad for it, right? Mel's forgotten all about it, apparently. That's what drinking does. <laughs> no. I want to say something nice about Mel before he comes out. Um, so... Oh, yeah, OK, here you go. I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby. <laughs> Please welcome Mel Gibson. You filth, all of it. Are we back? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Welcome back to the Golden Globes. Our next presenter is an actress who is both beautiful and talented. Born in England, she came to America and has taken Hollywood by storm. The star of the nominated movie, The Danish Girl, please... It's a dude. Eddie Redmayne. Tom, thank you. I'm afraid that's it. We're out of time. From myself and Mal Gibson, shalom. Hello and welcome to the 77th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel here in Los Angeles. I'm Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Um, You'll, you'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, 
I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. And they've no idea what Twitter is. So I got offered this gig by fax. So let's go out with a bang. Let's have a laugh at your expense, shall we? Remember, they're just jokes. We're all going to die soon, and there's no sequel. So, yeah, remember that. Um, but you all look lovely, all doled up. You came here in your limos. I came here in a limo tonight, and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So, no, shush. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for, OK? That must be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to her. And her dad was in Wild Hogs. So, lots of big celebrities here tonight. I mean, legends, icons, yeah? Look, at this table alone, uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. But... <laughs> Baby Yoda. Uh, oh, that's, that's Joe Pesci, sorry. Um, I love you, man. Don't have me whacked. Um, but tonight isn't just about the people in front of the camera. In this room are some of the most important TV and film executives in the world. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year... It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, Surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So, <laughs> fifth time. So. We were going to do an in memoriam this year, but when I saw the list of people that had died, it wasn't diverse enough. It just, no. It was mostly white people. And I thought, nah, not on my watch. So, maybe next year. Let's, let's see what happens. No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win everything. Good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, OK? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> you had to make your own way here and your own plane, didn't you? Right. But m seriously, most films are awful. Lazy. Remakes. Sequels. I've heard a rumour that there might be a sequel to Sophie's Choice. I mean, that would just be Meryl Streep going, well, it's got to be this one then. All the best actors have jumped to Netflix and HBO, you know. And the actors who just do Hollywood movies now do fantasy adventure nonsense. They wear masks and capes and really tight costumes. Their job isn't acting anymore. It's going to the gym twice a day and taking steroids, really. Have we got, a, have we got an award for most ripped junkie? No. No point. We know we'd win that. Um, Martin Scorsese, the greatest living director, made the news for his controversial comments about the Marvel franchise. He said they're not real cinema and uh, they remind him of theme parks. I agree. Although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> right. The Irishman was amazing. It was amazing. Um, that... It was. My fact, my, it was great. Uh, long, but amazing. Um, it wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So...
even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. Um, the world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. <laughs> he was also in the movie Cats, but no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? <laughs> But Dame Judi Dench defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play. Because she... I can't do this next joke. <laughs> because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg and licking her... <laughs> furble. Furble. She's old school. Um, it's the last time, who cares? <laughs> oh. Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show. A superb drama, yeah. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and... So... It's already three hours long. Right, let's do the first award. The first award. The first award is for best actor in a television series, musical or comedy. To present the award are a couple of actors off the telly. What can I say? Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon.